In our previous video, we showed you how to rank genes according to the information they provide on survival. Now, I'll show you how to find informative gene sets. That is, instead of single genes, we'll consider groups of genes at a time. First, I'll load and pre-process the data in orange. I'll be working with a survival data set from the Cancer Genome Atlas, or TCGA, that includes 306 samples from patients with cervical cancer. Now, let's inspect the data in a data table. We see that each sample includes the overall survival time, an event column with information on whether or not the patient died of cervical cancer, and the expression values of over 23,000 genes. This time, there's no clinical features, though. OK, I'll pass this data through the as survival data widget. And since there's only one time and event column in the data set, I can leave the settings as they are. Next, I have to pass the data through the genes widget to map the names to the gene IDs. These will be used later in the workflow. This can take a few moments. OK, in the top left corner, I can see that about 22,000 genes have been successfully matched with their NCBI IDs. A gene set is a list of genes representing a particular biological function, usually corresponding to a specific molecular pathway. For example, genes involved in glucose degradation make up the glycolysis gene set. Now, I want to know how the over and under expression of a particular pathway correlates with the survival of patients. One way of doing this is to first evaluate the expression of a pathway in each sample. Now, a high pathway enrichment score will roughly tell us that the molecular pathway is overexpressed. Now, I'll use a version of gene set enrichment analysis modified to evaluate single samples called single sample gene set enrichment analysis, or GSEA. In orange, single sample GSEA is implemented in a widget called single sample scoring. We can see that this widget requires two inputs, the expression data and one or more gene sets. Now, I'll choose a molecular pathway from the gene sets widget. Let's look at the set of gene sets called the Hallmark gene sets from the Molecular Signatures database. Now, Hallmark gene sets represent specific, well-defined biological processes and are a useful gene set collection to start off with. On the right, we can see that this collection includes gene sets corresponding to inflammatory response, hypoxia, heme metabolism, and the like. So I'll select the hypoxia gene set, which contains genes that are upregulated in response to low oxygen levels. Now I just check that the single sample GSEA is the selected method in single sample scoring. I can see that it is, so I can connect gene sets to the single sample scoring widget. It immediately starts calculating an enrichment score for each sample. Now I'll inspect the output in another data table, and we can find the same gene set expression data table as before, except now, there's a new column representing the enrichment score for the hypoxia hallmark gene set. A higher value suggests that hypoxia-related genes are overexpressed in that particular sample. To find how informative a pathway is in relation to survival, we can treat the enrichment scores for a given gene set as a new continuous variable. However, we still have to split the data at some threshold, like the median. Now, I'll reduce the data set to include only the two survival features and the enrichment scores for the hypoxia gene set. I can do this in select columns. Under features, I select all of the genes and move them to the ignored list. Then I choose the hypoxia hallmark gene set from the metas list and move it to the features list. Now the widget status bar should indicate that its output is now a reduced data set with only one column. This way, I can pass this reduced data set to discretize. I select the hypoxia gene set feature, and on the right, choose to split the data into intervals of equal frequency. Just as a note here, I could use the distribution widget like I did previously, but I'll just continue with discretize. Now, I pass the data on to the Kaplan-Meier widget. After opening it, 
I select a group by the gene set of interest and choose to display the confidence intervals and the median. The red line here represents patients with the upregulation of genes that respond to low oxygen levels. We can see that the upregulation of hypoxia related genes is associated with a worse survival prognosis. Now, hypoxia is often observed in large tumors since the proliferation of cancer cells can cause the tumor to outgrow the network of blood vessels that supplies tumor cells with oxygen. Instead of choosing a specific gene set, such as the hypoxia one, I might want to compare several gene sets in relation to survival. In our previous videos, we compared how different clinical features or gene expression values correlate with survival by splitting the data according to each feature, calculating the log rank statistics and ranking the features based on the p-value. Now I can do the same with gene sets by first calculating the enrichment scores for each set. I'll open the gene sets widget again, but this time I'll select all 50 hallmark gene sets and pass them on to the single sample scoring widget. Calculating the enrichment scores for each gene set might take a few moments. Okay, now checking out the results in a data table, we see that the table now has 50 extra columns. Each one corresponds to a hallmark gene set. Okay, let's open select columns one more time. The hallmark gene sets are marked as meta features, so I'll move them over to the features window. Now I can use the rank survival features widget to rank the gene sets according to survival. Let's order the genes according to the p-value. Now we see the three best ranked gene sets are those related to angiogenesis, signaling by a TGF beta cytokine, and the transition of cells from epithelial to mesenchymal phenotype. If I want to produce the corresponding Kaplan-Meier plots, I select the top three and pass them on to discretize. Here I can again mark the three gene sets and choose to split them in intervals of equal frequency. Finally, I pass the data to the Kaplan-Meier widget, tick the boxes for showing the median and confidence intervals, and group by one of the three gene sets. For all top three ranking gene sets, overexpression of the gene set is associated with a worse prognosis. Angiogenesis is the process of blood vessel formation. Cancer cells, like all cells, need nutrients and oxygen in order to grow and function properly. So, when a tumor mass grows, blood vessels are formed to ensure fresh blood supply. Now, the literature also indicates that TGF-beta exerts tumor-promoting effects in late-stage cancer, increasing tumor invasiveness and metastasis. Similarly, epithelial mesenchymal transition which refers to the de-differentiation of epithelial cells, has been shown to be involved in the initiation of metastasis in cancer progression. The correlation we found between gene set overexpression and biological activity is intriguing. It makes sense to us because of prior knowledge, but we should always keep in mind that it does not prove causation. In this video series, we presented the core concepts and frequently used methods of survival analysis. Using Orange, we went from simple data analysis pipelines used for sensor data to ever more complex ones. In this latest video, we've seen how to rank and use gene sets to find cohorts with different survival characteristics. Orange includes a number of interactive data analytics components to support exploration of survival data. I hope you enjoyed them as much as I did.